Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bing Crosby in Sing You Sinners with Ralph Bellamy, Elizabeth Patterson, and Jacqueline Wells. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. An old song and a happy coincidence gave the Lux Radio Theater its bill for this week. The song was a French-Canadian ballad that I'm planning to use in my new picture, Northwest Mounted Police. And the coincidence was that Bing Crosby knew it by heart. A few weeks ago at Paramount, I was listening to a phonograph record of the song, and outside my office window, a familiar voice took up the chorus, in pretty good French, too. So I leaned out the window and invited Bing to come in, through the door, of course. And before he left, we'd arranged for his appearance here tonight in Sing You Sinners, the chronicle of a happy-go-lucky chap named Joe Beebe, played by our national model of happy-go-luckiness, Mr. Crosby. All of you who saw Paramount's pet picture will be pleased to meet the Beebe family again. Bing, of course, has the same part he played on the screen. Ralph Bellamy is Bing's hard-working and very, very unhappy-go-lucky brother. And the other Beebe's of Sing You Sinners are represented by Elizabeth Patterson and Charles Peck. Miss Patterson in her original role of the mother, and Jacqueline Wells will play Martha Randall. Like all good American families, this one sticks together. The loyalty I know they share with our listeners. The familiar sight of Lux Flakes in your home is a symbol of your friendship for this program. And this well-merited confidence in Lux Flakes by millions of our friends is the thing that keeps the Lux Radio Theater on the air. The BBs seem to have a nat natural gift for getting into hot water. But they, they have the saving grace of humor. And with Bing Crosby among them, a liking for melody. Romance is present in the person of the girl who lives down the street. There are people who are glad to have you drop in on them any time. So we'll quietly raise the curtain on the first act of Sing You Sinners, starring Bing Crosby as Joe, Ralph Bellamy as David, Elizabeth Patterson as their mother, Jacqueline Wells as Martha Randall, and Charles Peck as Mike. <laughs> When a good mother has stood for hours over a hot stove so that her three sons may have a healthful and appetizing dinner, and when those three sons are late, as usual, and the dinner is slowly being cooked away to nothingness, the good mother has a perfect right and privilege to bang the pots around. Mrs. Beebe is banging her pots right now. Don't even be fit for the dog. I ought to know better by now. Try and fix something decent for it. Is that you, Dave? That's me. Hello, Mother. Hello, Mother, my eye. I suppose it'll never mean a thing to you that when you say you want supper at 6 o'clock, I expect you to be here to eat. Sorry, it. Mom, but I had to work overtime. Fella came in late with a brake relining job. What's for dinner, Mom? Don't touch that pot. Ouch! Ooh, it's hot. Told you not to touch it. Pot roast, huh? Why can't we have macaroni sometime? Because as long as I'm cooking, we'll eat for our health around here. You know macaroni makes Joe fat. Yeah, it's not macaroni. It's lack of work. There's Michael. Every time he comes in, the pictures fall off the wall. Hello, Ma. <laughs> we hear you. Hiya, Dave. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mom. What are you doing lately? Going to night school? Oh, what makes you say that, Mom? Hey, what's for supper? Don't touch that pot. Ouch! Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, pot roast, huh? Joe's favorite. Say, so why don't we ever have hot dogs? I love hot dogs like my own life. Take off your hat. Go wash your face. Okay, okay. What were you doing, Michael? Why were you so late? Oh, I was studying at the library. Studying? Studying what? Oh, about the world and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, we know. Here I am, Mom. Mm, about time, too. Hiya, man. Hiya, Hello, Joe. Joe. Hello, Mom. How are you? Where were you? Oh, I was looking for a job. Yeah, at the pool room. Now, that ain't kind, Dave. Well, Mom, what goes on the menu tonight? Don't touch that pot! Oh, oh. Gee. Don't you boys ever learn? Well, fill my mouth. It's pot roast. Yes. And sit down. Before it dries up and blows away. If we don't get a little more order around here, I'll never cook another bite, so help me. Someday, you night owls will come home and find me lying on a chaise lounge eating chocolates. 
Michael, where are you going? I want to get the ketchup. Get the chili sauce while you Bring the up. mustard, too, Mike. Yeah, I already got it. Oh, Here. dear. What's the use of cooking a decent meal, watching a bunch of idiots splatter it with junk? Take some of that cauliflower, Michael. Oh, more. It smells like old laundry. I said take... Take some cauliflower. Okay, okay. Gee. Well, Dave... Saw you driving Martha home today. Boy, you weren't saying a word. Just driving along, stiff as a poker. Pass the rolls, will you, Joe? You know, if I had a little number like that dog in my tracks for three years, boy, I'd really give myself up. Joe, be quiet. You'll keep your yap shut about Martha. <laughs> What's the matter with you? All I keep saying is, why don't you marry the gal? You know darn well why I don't marry her. Because you haven't got enough vinegar to pitch in and help keep this family going. Say, listen, can I help it if there's nothing in this burg for a guy with ideas? What ideas? Outsmarting some chump at the pool hall for a couple of bucks. Or swapping the shirt off your back for a brass doorknob. All right, all right, go ahead. Razz me all you want about swapping. But you can't show me a big man in this country today who didn't get where he is by swapping something for, for something. Or something. Dave, you shouldn't lay into Joe that way. Why don't you go ahead and do what he tells you? Sure, get married and then find out you can't take care of yourselves after I think I'm set. No, thanks. Well, now listen. Let's quit talking about it. I'm only trying to tell you what I did this afternoon. What? Well, I got us a job at a dance in Pleasanton. You got a... mm -hmm. Oh! Listen, Joe, how many times do I have to tell you I don't want any more of that trio stuff? Well, it's a job, ain't it? Is that the only kind of a job you can get when we have to drag Mike and me in on it? All right. Oh, I don't like it any more than you do, but what am I going to say when a man offers us 15 bucks? Yes, what should he say to now, that? Now, look, yeah. Joe, I work in a garage, see? I got a decent job, and I like it. And if you expect me to spend my nights blowing my brains out into a clarinet while you sing to a lot of screwballs dancing around on a dance floor, well, I'm a man, doggone it, and I want to stay one. Me too. I build up a tough reputation working out horses at the fairgrounds all summer, and then bang, you shove an accordion into my hands and turn me into a Buster Brown. You keep quiet. Now look, Dave. Gee, I know, I know how you feel. You feel the same way as I do about singing. Oh, is that so? After I've spent every last cent your father left us to teach you music, you all go around blabbing you won't play or sing because you're men. What's the matter with you? Men sing? I don't care, Mom. I won't do it. Me neither. All right. Hold things off. It is not off. Now get this straight, all of you. As long as you can earn a nickel by opening your traps or squeezing a music box, you're going to do it. When's that dance at Pleasanton? Tonight. We'll start getting dressed. Now, listen, Mom, I got a date with Martha tonight. Take Martha to the dance. No, I won't do it. We'll see about that. Now, listen, I, you I you see you going, know, all of you, so you might as well shut up about it. I'm no millionaire, but I'm not the type to care. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. And it's my universe, even with my empty purse. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. I wouldn't take all the wealth of Wall Street for a road where nature trod. And I calculate that I'm worth my weight in golden rods. Lucky, lucky me, I can live in luxury. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams Oh, I'm no millionaire But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams And it's my universe Even with my empty purse Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams I wouldn't take all the wealth of Wall Street For a road where nature tries And I calculate that I'm worth my way In golden rhymes Oh, lucky, lucky me I can live in luxury Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams Thanks, Martha. I hated to drag you away out this way. Oh, don't be silly, Dave. I liked it. Yeah, but look, you may not like what's coming next. What's the matter, darling? Well, a fella just called from town. There's a truck stalled out on Highway Number 9. You, you mean you've got to go out there? Well, I could pick up $10 pretty easy, Martha. And every nickel counts on that house we're going to build someday. Oh, we'll build that house all right. You wait and see. 
You sure you won't mind, honey? As a matter of fact, I insist. I'll need that $10 for drape. Gee, darling, sort of like a dream, isn't it? Yes, but that truck isn't. Hurry up now and get it unstored. Okay, I'll get Joe to take you home. Wait a second. Joe! Hey, Joe. Here you are, Dave. Here's the pickings. Say, that's pretty easy dough for two songs. Yeah, look, Joe, do me a favor, will you? Take Martha home for me. What goes? I got a job to do. I'll take Mike along to help, and you can have the car. And here, mm-hmm. here's a buck. You can buy her a sandwich and coffee on the way. Thanks. Say, you're getting kind of generous with your little girlfriend, aren't you? Well, if you can't trust your own brother, what do you say? Sure. If you're willing to let her go out with me, well, why should I squawk? Give me the keys to the car. Here, and take it easy. I want her back in just one piece. That's kind of tough, having the boyfriend walk out on you. Oh, I don't mind. It's all for a good cause. Dave and I will make up for it someday when we're married. Whenever that may be. <laughs> don't tell me. I know. As soon as I get a job and hold it. Why don't you, Joe? You could easily. Oh, just not my style, that's all. When money comes my way, it's going to come fast and plenty. You wait. I am waiting. I'm not exactly on your side at that, though. It's too bad you aren't my girl. What? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about the family until after the wedding. Then I'd have you and... Nothing else would matter anyway. Oh, I wish Dave felt that way. I mean, sometimes I do. But unfortunately, you're not my lily. Except for tonight. Well, here we are. Here we are where? Well, Dave told me to put the feed bag on for you, didn't he? You mean we're going to that that joint over there? What do you mean, joint? (laughs) That's the finest roadhouse in these parts. That's the old straggle inn. (laughs) Straggle in and stagger out. <laughs> Listen, I don't even come here with Dave. Well, that's all the more reason why you should see it. Touch of nightlife's good for you. Do you do you think Dave would mind? Dave? Well, why should he squawk? It's only his girl and his money. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Well, what do you think of it? Where do all these people come from? Oh, they come from some of our finest families, <laughs> practically. Well, I still say we shouldn't be here. What's wrong with this place? It's quiet, and restful. <laughs> Don't you think so? <laughs> folks, folks, folks. I really think that with a little bit of applause, we might be able to bring about a little bit of added attraction here tonight. What? Now, sitting over there is that Stokesbury flash yourself, Massa Joe Beebe. <laughs> Come on, Joe. How about it? Oh, for the love of Mike. Go on, Joe. Well, all right, for you, but I'll hold it against you. Step right up, Joe. Thanks, Mouse. What'll it be, fella? Well, let's take a whack at that, uh, don't let that moon get away. Yeah. Wait for me on the curve. Right. A uh, professor, a uh, one, a uh, two. It's one of those nights for adventure, and we ought to be recklessly gay. Who knows what we'll find? So if you're inclined, don't let that moon get away. Your eyes have a way of revealing the thoughts that you really should say. It may be romance. So while there's a chance, don't let that moon get away. And don't let this meeting adjourn. And don't be so ready to go. For now is the right time to learn what every young heart should know. These moments don't happen so often. Doesn't seem right to delay. If you feel it too, Whatever you do, don't let that moon get away. And don't let this meeting adjourn. Now, don't be so ready to go. Now is the right time to learn what every young heart should know. These moments don't happen so often. Doesn't seem right to delay. If you feel it too, Whatever you do, don't let that moon get away. Thanks a lot, Joe. Hey, you uh, miss. Hey, you uh, Joe. Hey, who ordered the drinks? Compliments to the bartender. Thanks, partner. I can't drink this stuff. Oh, you have to. Now, that's compliments to the bartender. Hey, you uh, miss. Here you are, Joe. Well, now what? Compliments to the band leader. 
There's another round coming up from one of their customers. Oh, my. Well, I'm beginning to see where music has its good points. <laughs> well, what's, what's so funny now? You, for a fellow who hates music, do you know how many times you sang at that place? Well, those are for you. Oh. As a matter of fact, you know... If you weren't Dave's girl, I'd tell you I love you. <laughs> you don't love me. You're just feeling good. Oh, it's the same thing. How do you feel? Fine. A little excited. That's love. It is not. It's a compliment to the house. I'll bet you know what I bet. I bet we'd get along like a million dollars. What do you like that Dave for, anyway? Oh, I don't know. Lots of reasons, I guess. Well, you better think me over. I'm, uh... I'm a lot of laughs. You. <laughs> well, see, see there? I haven't hardly opened my mouth, and I'm a riot. <laughs> oh, you. Ride them. All the alley outs in free. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, beef steak. You. Joe, you're passing the house. Yippee. Hey, uh, Martha. Old Joe Beebe delivers them safe and sound. A little bit late. Dave. Well, well, well. Hiya, Pappy. You been waiting here for us? Yeah, where were you? Why, we was taking in the sights. Just showing the little woman what she's missing by marrying you. <laughs> You're drunk. He <laughs> didn't buy the drinks, Dave. They, they just kept giving them to him and well, asking him to sing. All right, Pappy, I'm lit. And I took your girl out, and I showed her the first good time she had since she started going with you, so what? If you weren't my brother, I'd... I know, you're America's big brother. Honest, hard-working, and you're stupid as a duck. Why don't you get wise to yourself, you big chump? Why, you... Dave! Oh, Dave. I... Oh. I didn't mean to do that. All of a sudden, I... Go on inside, Martha. I'll see you tomorrow. He didn't... He didn't realize what he was saying, Dave. I know. Go on in and I'll take him home. Good night. Good night. Oh. Oh. Come on, Joe. Come on, get up. Oh. I didn't mean it, Joe. Come on, get up. Take it easy now. We don't want to wake up Mom. Oh, you should have hit me harder, Dave. Why didn't you hit me harder? You know what I'd do with a guy like me, Dave? I'd prop him up against the wall. I'd shove my face right through his fist, vice versa. Why didn't you hit me harder, Shh, Dave? Now be quiet. I tell you, you really should Shut up. Go inside. I'll get you to bed. I can't see anything. The bed's right over here. I found it. Quiet! Hey, Dave, Joe, Joe, what's the matter? Mike, get out of here. Well, what? Gosh, what happened to you, Joe? Oh, I got what was coming to me, that's all. I'll beat it. Go on. Did somebody slug you? Are you okay, Joe? Mike, get out of here before you wake up Mom. Well, he's in trouble, ain't he? I, I gotta help. We don't need you, Mike. Now go on. Scram. Duck. Okay, okay. Come on, now. Get your clothes off. Oh, Dave, sometimes I turn into such a heel. I surprise even myself. Do you know what I was trying to do tonight? Move in on your gal. How do you like that? Give me your foot. I'm glad you clunked me, Dave. And you don't have to worry about Martha, boy. She's all for you. I'm all for both of you. Give me your other foot. You think I'm no good, huh? I'm going to surprise you, though. I'm going to fix it so you can marry Martha. Now, you watch me, Dave. You know, when I think of what you've done for me and for this family, and never squawking unless somebody gets way out of line. Oh, you're the kind of fellow I want to be, Dave. I know. Come on, now. Get under the covers. Did I tell you about my surprise, Dave? Did I tell you? Yeah, you told me. Good night. Oh. Good night, Dave. No. Good night, Pappy. Good night, Joe. He's going all right. I heard him opening and closing the drawers. We can't be going. Where would he go? All right, Mom. Calm down. I'll speak to him. He was out all day looking for a job. Bill Hodgkins told me. He was trying to get a job doing anything. Hello, folks. Why, Joe, you... You packed a grip. Yeah, I'm... I'm leaving, Mom. Why, Joe? Oh, you don't have to ask me that, Mom. I, I'm going to Los Angeles. 
I'm going to prove that I can amount to something, and I'll send for you and Mike the minute I get set. But we want you here. I, I know where I belong. Now, please, Mom, don't ask me to stay. All right, Joe, but not even for dinner. It's hot roast, left over. Sorry, Mom. Give us a kiss, huh? Oh, Joe. Well, Dave, I'm going to ask you not to leave, Joe. Me too. Well, thanks, men, but this is what I want to do. Whatever you say. You know, Dave, we don't, we don't see things the same way, and I'm getting wise now. I, I just don't fit into this town. So I'm going to go where I can do the family some good. And you're going to be surprised one of these days when I send for the folks, and I'm going to give you the okay on marrying Martha. If that's why you're leaving, Joe, you don't have to. Well, I, I know what I'm doing. Well, you'll need some money. <laughs> oh, thanks. This is on me. So long, Dave. So long, Joe. I'll be seeing you soon, Mom. Oh, Joe, I wish you wouldn't. Oh, I got to. Goodbye. So long, Mike. Dave. Gee. Well, he finally made his break. I'm sorry he did, but I, I'm glad, too, because it'll bring out the fight I know he's got in him. His paw was the same way. He just drifted along without a worry in the world till you boys started coming. Then he dug in and worked till the day he died. God bless him. I'm going upstairs. Good night, Mom. You know, Mike, you don't realize until he's gone how you feel about him. Good night, Mike. Good night. Gee, this is the darndest family. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two of Sing You Sinners with Bing Crosby, Ralph Bellamy, Elizabeth Patterson, and Jacqueline Wells. During this short intermission, I'm going to make a little demonstration for you. And Sally has brought along a friend of hers to help me. She's Mrs. Bertha Aldridge of Hollywood. You're a housewife, aren't you, Mrs. Aldridge? That's right, Mr. Ruick. Any children? Oh, yes, two. Oh, <laughs> that's mighty nice. Now, Mrs. Aldridge, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you recognize this package I'm holding? Why, of course. It's a box of Lux Flakes. I'd know it anywhere. Yes, it's the familiar Lux package. But there's something different about it. Why, well, what do you mean? Inside this box is a wonderfully speedier Lux. It's the new Quick Lux. Oh, I know all about that, Mr. Ruick. I think it's really amazing the way new Quick Lux suds up in just no time at all. Why, I used to say Lux was so wonderful they couldn't improve on it. And now they've gone and done it. A lot of women have said the same thing. And it's true. We couldn't make Lux any safer or purer. But for years, the Lux laboratories have been working with a wonderful ingredient that gives suds faster. And these new Lux flakes contain it. That's why they're speedier. Look at them. See how sheer they are? Uh-huh. You can actually see through them. Now, I'll put them into this pan and pour in some water. See? Just as I said. Look how fast the suds come. In just a second. Yes, Mrs. Aldrich, new quick lux bubbles into suds at the touch of water. In water as cool as your hand, and that safe temperature for washing your nice things, it actually dissolves three times as fast as any of ten other famous soaps tested. Flakes, bars, beads, or chips. Now, here's something else. New quick lux also goes further. It gives you more suds, ounce for ounce, than any of the other soaps tested. So, you see, it's thrifty, really thrifty. And that means something with a family of mine. <laughs> well, it's good news for any family, especially since New Quick Lux doesn't cost you a cent more. Your grocer has it now in the same familiar Lux package. Get the generous large size box. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Sing You Sinners, starring Bing Crosby as Joe, Ralph Bellamy as David, Elizabeth Patterson as Mrs. Beebe, and Jacqueline Wells as Martha Randall. Long months have passed, and nothing has been heard from Joe since he left home. At last comes a telegram from Mrs. Daisy Beebe. Dear Mom, pack up Mike's other shirt and hurry to Los Angeles. 
am in the swap shop business and cleaning up. Tell Dave to get married before Martha realizes her mistake. Love, Joe. Mike! Mike! Joe's got a swap shop. He wants us with him. We're going to Los Angeles. You'd never get here. Hiya, Mom. Oh, Joe, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Joe. Hiya, Mike. Well, you sure did it, didn't you? Look at that suit he's got. Me. Oh, you look good, Joe. Oh, you betcha. We're riding high now. Hey, uh, Red Cap, get those bags, will you? Want a cab, sir? Why, sure. Why not? A cab? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Come on. Say, Mom, why didn't Dave get married before you left? Well, he just wanted to be sure that everything was all right here first. All right, sir. Oh, Joe, oh. I'm so happy. Where do you live, Joe? You got a swimming pool? Oh, no, not oh. yet, kid. Give me a couple of weeks, will you? I'm so anxious to see the house, Joe. Oh, the house. Well, it, um, we're not going home right away, Mom. We've got to make a stop first. You better get ready for the biggest surprise of your life. Oh, Joe. Right over there, driver. Just uh, pull up in front of that barn. Okay. But, Joe... What is this place? It's a racetrack, ain't it, Joe? Hold your hats, folks. Okay, driver, you can wait. Right. Come on, Mom. What in the world? Right over here, Mom. Howdy, Mr. Joe. Morning, Felder. How's the big horse today? Oh, he just fine, Mr. Joe. <laughs> Hear that? He's getting to know you. Hi, Gus, old boy. Joe, will you please tell us? Folks, I want you to meet Uncle Gus, the grandest racehorse that ever peeked through a bridle. Racehorse? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Mom, if you ever looked your fortune in the face, there it is. There's the horse that's going to carry the three of us right into that field of clover. You mean it's ours? Really ours? Front and back. Oh, boy. Why, Joe, do you mean to tell me that you can afford to keep a racehorse out of what you take in at the swap shop? Swap shop? Oh, well, I, I haven't got that anymore. I, I swapped it. <laughs> you, you swapped it? Mm-hmm. For what? Uncle Gus. But... Where are you working? Oh, right here, training Uncle Gus. Do you get paid for it? <laughs> no. Well, where do you make your money? Well, I'm not making any right now, but as soon as Uncle Gus starts racing, it'll only be a couple of months, we'll start talking out... Joe, do you realize that you sent for us? Told Dave to get married? Told us to sell the oh, house? there's nothing to worry about, Mom. Things, things might be a little tight for a while, but I got a nice little house, two months' rent paid in advance... Credit at the market, credit for Uncle Gus's feet. Sure, he don't know. need a job. No. We got a racehorse. Yeah. Can I ride Uncle Gus, Joe? Can I be a jockey? Shut your trap. Joe, are you crazy? What are we going to do when your credit runs out? Are we all supposed to go back home and move in on Dave and Mop? Well, that won't happen. Now, believe me, Mom, you got to take a chance if you're going to amount to something, and my chance came. Yes, your chance came, and you traded yourself right out of it. Just the same as you've done ever since you were old enough to have a thought in your head. And now what? Where do we go from here, big shot? Don't worry. Now, whatever you do, don't worry. Say, uh, you got a dollar for filter? I got to keep him eating, you know. Oh, dear. Just, just a dollar will be enough. Thanks, Mom. Here you are, filter. Pork chops tonight. Thank you, sir. And keep old Uncle Gus in good shape. You stay right under them hind feet. Yes, sir. All the time. Come on, Mom. So long, Philip. So long, boss. Don't you want me to stay here, Joe? Don't you think I ought to stay with Uncle Gus? No, I think we better be going home. That, that is if Mom's got the cab fare. Now, listen here, Joe. Oh, Mom, now stop worrying, will you? Come on home. We'll talk about it. Now, this is the living room. That's the dining room over there behind that screen. It isn't much of a place, I know, but... Will you stay, Mom? Please. There's nothing else we can do. And remember this... I'll say we'll stay. Look at me on Uncle Gus. I'm coming around the turn. I'm coming like a house of fire. I'm way ahead. I'm way ahead. Stop it. Stop it, Michael. I say remember this. As far as Dave and Martha are concerned, you still have the swap shop and you're earning money. They mustn't find out the truth, you understand? Yes, Mom. Because no matter what happens to us, you're not going to ruin things again for them. Can you imagine that? All upset when we got us a racehorse. Mom, if I didn't know you so well, I'd... Oh, quiet, quiet. Yes. I'm afraid we all know each other too well. Hello, Mom. We're back. Hiya, Mom. What's for supper, Mom? Out! Oh! Ooh. There's a stew for supper, as usual. Well, did you get that fool horse entered in a race yet? Now, Mom, fool horse. 
That's fine talk after he just breezes three quarters and one fourteen flat. Breezes Handy, one fourteen. I asked you a simple question in plain English. When is Uncle Gus going to run? In a couple of weeks. We've got to wait for our spot. Yes, it's been a couple of weeks for the last two months. Michael, I told you not to clean those jockey boots in the kitchen. Now, we're going to leave this house like we found it. Oh, Ma. Say, that's right, isn't it? We, we're going to get kicked out of here in three days, aren't we? Yes, in three days. Hmm. And you sit there like a king reading that crazy horse paper. Do you realize we won't even have a roof over our heads? Yeah, but a couple of weeks, we'll be right back on top again. Yes, on top of the bread line. Oh, answer that, Michael. Tell him. Tell him we'll pay him next week. Okay, I'm getting good with that yarn. There's just one thing I can be thankful for. That is that Dave and Martha don't know what's happening here. Dave ever found out. Oh, settle down, Mom. Now, settle down. Nobody's going to find out mm. about anything. Yeah. Hiya, son. Well, looky here. Hey, Mom, it's Dave and Martha. Come oh, on, come on oh, my. All right, Mom. Oh, no, all right. Do, Joe? How, how I don't know. Well, I mean, act just oh, like those letters you wrote. Everything's fine. Hey, Get there. It. Hiya, oh. Joe. <laughs> Hiya, Dave. Hello, Mom. Oh, David and Martha. Hello, Mrs. Beebe. Oh. Well, hell, well, are you, are you married? Are you on your honeymoon? Better yet. We're going to be married here. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I did so want to see the wedding. Well, that's what we thought. The whole family, you know. Say, Dave, have you heard the news? Joe's got himself a race. Shut, shut, oh, shut, shut. Oh. What's hey, the matter? Quiet, Michael. Now, go, go straighten up your room. <laughs> He's so darn fidgety. Uh, go on, go on. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, how do you like the part of the house here? Oh, it's quite a place. We're going to build our, ourselves pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, when do you have to go back? Oh, in four or five days. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing, only we are moving in three days. Well, what's the matter with this? Well, it's kind of small. Say, you must be a one-man riot in this town. Anyway, I'm not proud. How about getting married right here, huh? Throw a little feed somewhere so nobody will have to cook? Wine with the grub, maybe, huh? Well, that sounds great. Yeah, it'll be kind of <laughs> nice all being together. Oh, say, Joe, I got a laugh for you. Yeah? I brought our old instruments along mm -hmm. so you can dump them in the swap shop. The accordion, the clarinet, and your guitar. Sure feel good to know they're gone, huh? Yes, won't it? <laughs> hey, look, Dave, look at me. Our old colors. Hey, Michael. What's the idea of the jockey suit? Look, Dave, look. I'm yes, coming in the stretch. That's Uncle Gus by ahead. Uncle Gus by ahead. Hey. Uncle Gus pulling away. Look at me oh. go. Hey, what is this? What's the idea? Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. I'm a real apprentice mm -hmm. jockey now, and I'm going to ride Uncle Gus that Joe traded for a swap shop, and I'm going to win on him, too. Next. Because we got to win on account of getting kicked oh, out of this place. Yes. Can you stay and see me ride, Dave? Can you? Shut up. Oh. Well, Joe, what about this? Well, there's nothing much to tell. Except we got this Uncle Gus instead of the swap shop, and, and we got a chance to make a lot of money, too. And you're going to get kicked out of here. David, I... I don't think we ought to burden Martha with any family trouble. This is a great thing to walk into after planning like we did. Martha, would you mind stepping outside a few minutes? Certainly. But, Dave, no matter what Please, happens, Martha. I... All right, darling. Now, David, It was I think nice I... reading in your letters how well Joe was doing. Well, I thought it was better to... Better? To lie instead of telling me the facts... That Joe's no better than he ever was? That he can no more take care of a family than he can fly? Well, they're all right now, aren't What are they? you using for money? Well, we... We have credit. Sure. Well, and who's going to pay off? I am, as soon as my horse starts running. Joe, if I thought it'd do any good, I'd knock you. Uh... All right, sit down and let's have it straight. Where do you stand and how long can you hold out? Well, it's like this. We... Well, Dave, what's the bad news? Can you imagine a guy like that sending for his family? They're broke, aren't they? Worse than that, they're $400 in debt. And not a chance to pay off. Mother and the kid living on beans. What are you going to do about it? Well, there's only one thing to do. Stay here and get them straightened out. And me? Maybe it won't take long, Martha. If you'll only wait. But why? Oh, let's be married tomorrow, just as we planned. And, and I can stay here and help. Drag you into this mess? Marry you into a family that won't even have a place to hang its hat? I'll try to get a job here. I will get one. That'll help some. Can't you understand, Martha, that the one thing I want to do is be able to take care of you and give you that house and everything we've talked about. But marrying you now, moving in on a lot of trouble, I'm not going to do it. I understand. You don't think the way I do, Dave, and never will. Because if you did, you wouldn't care what was happening. You'd only know that you loved me and wanted me, and nothing on earth could stop you from having me. Martha... You'll never get this family set. They won't change, and... And I love them for it. I'm going home now, Dave, and 
Now, I don't want to hear from you again until you've realized that they're going to be just as much a part of our future as we are, trouble and all. You'd... You'd better find that out in a hurry, dear. Goodbye. Where's Martha? She ain't upstairs. Where'd she go, Dave? She's gone. And gone. I don't blame her. Gone? Why? After what you've done, you pull that? Joe, if I did half what I wanted to do, I'd kick you all the way back to Stokesbury. I've lost Martha. I'm losing my job on account of you, and now I'm darn near losing my mind. Now grab that guitar and stand up. Uh, uh, what for? Go on. You too, Mike. Get your accordion. Well, well, what did I do? It's not what you did. It's what you're going to do. Now play. Play what, Dave? Play anything. Okay, okay. Joe, you sing. Oh, now listen. Sing Dave. before I ram this horn down your throat. A pocket full of dreams. Now, we're going to practice, see? We're going to get going and we're going to get a job. I'll put this Even family out of speed if I have to break verse. everybody's leg doing it. Because I've Louder. got a pocket full of dreams. Louder! Pocket By the pool room. Small fry should be in the schoolroom. My, my, now you put down that cigarette. You ain't a grown up high and mighty yet. Small fry dancing for a penny. Small fry counting up how many. My, my, now you just listen here to me. You ain't the biggest catfish in the sea. You practice packing all day long to some old radio song. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. You better listen to your pa. Someday practice up on the law. And then you'll be a real success, yes. Small fry, you kiss the neighbor's daughter. Small fry, now get on back in the shallow water. Seems I should take you across my knee. You ain't the biggest catfish in the sea. You got your feet all soaking wet. Lord, you'll be the death of me yet. Oh, me, oh, my small fry. Well, I guess they like this, Dave. Yeah, well, I don't. Every night I work in this joint, I feel more and more like cutting my throat. Yeah, but when Uncle Gus wins tomorrow... Wins? Oh, boy, <laughs> sure thing. I hope. What do you say, Mike? Joe, I, I've been excited so long thinking about riding Uncle Gus that... Well, now I'm kind of shaky. Ah, but don't you worry about me, though. I'll be all right tomorrow. Where are you going? I managed a guy said he wanted to see me. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. What would the manager want to see Mike for? Come in. Oh, come in, Mike. Yeah, yes, sir. Hey, come here. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Harry Ringmer. Hi, son. Yes, sir. I'm glad to know you, sir. Uh, Mike's the kid I was telling you about, Harry. He works for me here, and he's got his jockey papers to ride his brother's horse. Uh -huh. Sit down, kid. What's the matter? Are you nervous? Oh, no, no, sir. Just, well, you know, riding my first race tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Ringmer's got a horse in that race, too, Mr. Bank. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Banks a good horse, but ours is better. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. You think you'll win, huh? I gotta. Why? Well, we already caused my brother Dave a lot of trouble and his girl and... Oh, just family reasons. Oh, that's too bad. How do you mean? Well, you're plenty green, kid, and lots of things can happen out there to spoil your cake. For instance, the rail. Well, what about the rail? Well, when you hit the stretch and the other boys start crowding you, it's tough going. I've seen a tear a kid's leg right out of the socket. Throw him under the horses. Well, I ain't afraid. You really need the dough, don't you? We sure do. Well, there's a way of turning a race into a sure thing sometimes. You know what I mean? That's what my brother Joe likes. A sure thing. Yes, sir, that's good. I got a smart brother, kid. He knows what he's talking about. He's smart, all right. Sure he is. And we can help your family out plenty by taking your brother's tip. No worry about losing the race, no risk, no nothing. Just play the sure thing. Huh? Now, look. You got $400 coming to you if you win. But suppose another horse crowds you. What if you get pocketed and shoved up against the rail? What do you got? Nothing. Now, look. Did you ever see one of these before? Oh, no, sir. A hundred-dollar bill. Well, that's yours and three more like it tomorrow, if you don't win. If I don't win? 
Hey. Yeah, like your brother says, the sure thing. And you want to help your family, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, sure I do. Okay. Al, would you mind stepping outside for a minute? Not at all, Harry, not at all. Thanks. Now look, son. Hey, Al, you, you seen Mike anyplace? Mike? Oh, oh, yes, yes. He just went back to the dressing room, I think. Thanks. Oh, Joe, wait. Huh? Uh... How do you think Uncle Gus will do tomorrow? Oh, he'll win, of course. You think so? Can't miss. If Why? you were a gambling man, I'd take you up on that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Al. I don't bet. Uh, what kind of odds? Two to one. That's as good as you'll get at the track tomorrow and maybe better. <laughs> you know, Al, I want to tell you something. You ought to be a little more careful with your dough. This Uncle Gus is a sure thing. Yeah, that's the way you feel. Go ahead. Put your money in the bank, Al. Anyway, I, I couldn't bet if I wanted to. I haven't got a dime. What difference does that make? You're working, aren't you? You could pay it every week. Al, you serious about this? Sure. I want to bet against your Uncle Gus. Yeah? I'll put up plenty, too. Well, Al, I, I wouldn't do this, only... Well, you know, I'm sort of on my good behavior, and if you know what I mean, and, well... Well, sure thing's a sure thing, I guess. Okay, it's a bet. Curtain falls on Act Two of Sing You Sinners with Bing Crosby, Ralph Bellamy, Elizabeth Patterson, and Jacqueline Wells. Mr. DeMille brings you Act Three in just a moment. Before our stars return, I want you to listen to a sound over the air and guess, if you can, what it is. You ready? Did you recognize that? Well, it was an elastic rubber band being stretched, then snapping back. Now, every woman in our audience would, I'm sure, like to stretch her budget, make her pennies and her dollars go further. Now, that's one reason for hurrying to your grocer's tomorrow and buying some of the wonderful New Quick Lux. New Quick Lux is thrifty. It goes further than any of ten other leading soaps tested. Ounce for ounce gives more suds. Why is that? It's because New Quick Lux is so rich and pure. It hasn't any fillers, hasn't any alkaline builders. It's a fine, pure soap. All right, that's one way New Quick Lux is thrifty. Another way... Is the way it helps keep all your washables new-looking longer. Why take stockings? New Quick Lux will cut down on runs. Mm -hmm. And undies. It removes perspiration completely, but leaves the colors lovely. And sweaters and dresses. In fact, everything that's washable at all stays lovely-looking longer when you use gentle Lux flakes. So stretch your clothes budget by doing this. Tomorrow, when you do your marketing, get a big box of this wonderful product. Your grocer now has New Quick Lux. It's in the same familiar box... It costs no more. You'll like its speed, its safety, and its thrift. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We continue with the third act of Sing You Sinners. It's the afternoon of the big race. Three minutes before the horses go to the post. Just outside the jockey's dressing room, the gambler Ringma waits for Mike. As the boy comes through the door, Ringma grabs him quickly. Just a second. Oh. Hello, Mr. Ringman. How do you feel, kid? Fine, fine. That other 300 bucks is waiting for you. Y yes, sir. And you know what else is waiting for you if you try to get funny? W well, what do you mean? It'll be the last trick you ever try on or off a track. Remember that? Yes, sir. All right, now beat it. Yes, sir. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Well, Pete, did you get the bet down? Yeah, sure. I got the whole three grand covered at two to one. Nobody got wise it was my money, huh? No. If we get six grand in sucker money the minute Mr. Bank wins... Are you sure that jockey and Uncle Gus won't cross you? I'm scared to death. Even if he does try to pull anything smart, my jockey will take care of him. Let's go, Pete. Say, this is the only way to bet on the name. Riot is ready. Two minutes. Everything okay, Mike? I, I guess so, Joe. Now, don't get excited. Just, just pretend it's a regular workout, see? Of course, don't get so wrapped up that you go forgetting it's a race now, but, you know, sort of, well, you know. Yeah, Joe, yeah, sure. What's the matter? You you feeling funny? Oh, no. It... The only reason we want to win is the money, ain't it, Joe? We sure need the money, don't we? Yeah, we, we need the money, all right. In more ways than one. How 
How else do you mean? Well, I wasn't going to tell you because I didn't want to get you all upset, but I went out and bet our next 10 weeks' pay against $2,000 that we'd win it. You did? Oh, Joe, this is awful. Why? Oh, I know it's wrong, but I was only trying to do like you always said. The sure thing, Joe, you know, the, the sure thing. What did you do? Well, the man that owns Mr. Bank has given me $400 to lose the race. What are you talking about? Oh, it's terrible, ain't it, Joe, but... Well, we, we needed the money, and, and like you said... Oh, quit telling me what I said. Oh, but lots of times... Shut up. Right is up. Come, come on, get up there. All right, on the track. Look, Mike, lean down here a minute, will you now? I've done some wrong things myself, see, plenty of them, but, but what, you've, what you've done is cheating. Can't you see that? I, I got mixed up, Joe. Well, I know, Mike, but whatever we do, we can't do anything crooked. We mean too much to each other, this, this family and everything. Gee, if one of us gets in a jam, it's going to hurt all of us. What if Mom found out, Mike? I, I see what you mean. I, I just didn't have it straight what you meant about the sure thing. Yeah, I guess it's all my fault. Here I am trying to tell you what's wrong, and I'm out betting yours and Dave's share of ten weeks' pay. Oh, that, that's not wrong. You were just trying to make money for all of us. Well, I wish you wouldn't feel that way about me, Mike. Because I'm wrong lots of times, but I gave you this bad steer without meaning to. Maybe it'd be better if you'd figure these things out for yourself, huh? Whatever you say is okay with me, Joe. All right, then. Let's go on out there and win this race, huh? But I already got that hundred dollars. Where is it? In my boot. I didn't know where else to hide it. Well, give it to me. I'll, I'll take care of this. Now, you do what I tell you. Go on out there and win this race. You'll stick with me, won't you? You'll stick with me if anything happens? Oh, you're darn tootin'. Oh, that's swell. You just watch me. We'll show you. Me and Uncle Scott. The horses are nearing the starting gate. How's everything, Joe? Oh, everything's great. Oh. Fine. <laughs> Don't Mike look cute sitting up there all alone? That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, fine. Uh, hey, Dave. What? Dave, there's liable to be trouble if our horse wins. Uh, will you come around to the barn after the race? Why? Well, Ringmer's paying Mike $400 to lose the race to Mr. Bank, and I just told Mike to go on out and win it. Well, why in the world? Shh. Now, it's all my fault. He thought he was doing what I'd do. He's just trying to get some money for us. Listen, what's so important about this race? Personally, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans, and we haven't got any bets. Or have we? Well, yes, Dave, we, we have. How much? Look, Dave, I, I hate to tell you this. How but, much? Well, uh, ten weeks salary. Ten weeks salary? Now, don't get sore. Don't get sore. I'll break your neck. I know, Dave. I know. But... Say, what are you two talking about? Oh, uh, nothing, Mom. Nothing at all. We, we just... Oh. The horses are in the starting gate. It looks like a start, and there they go. Uncle Gus is third on the outside by a length of one half. Santori is fourth by two lengths and fair trial. Turning into the back stretch is Mr. Bank in front by half a length on the inside. Sandy Man on the outside is second by a length of one half. Uncle Gus is third. Hold it, Mike! Stay up there, kid! Right him, Mike! Come on, Mike! Mike. Mike. Bank in front on the rail by two lengths. Sandy Man on the outside is second by half a length. Uncle Gus is third between horses. Santori is fourth and... And Uncle Gus is moving up on the inside. It's Mr. Bank at front by a length of one half. Uncle Gus is second by a length, and Sandy Man is third. At the three quarters, hey, it's boss, Mr. Bank at front by He's out to win. He's crossing you, boss. He better not. I tell you, he's trying to win. Uncle Gus is second. Shut up. He won't cross us. If he does, I'll... They're coming into the stretch. It's Mr. Bank in front by a length and one half. Uncle Gus is second by a neck, and Pat is third. It's Mr. Bank and Uncle Gus, and they're driving hard. They're head and head. It's Mr. Bank and Uncle Gus. They're coming down to the finish now with Uncle Gus, the winner by an O. Oh, who won? Who it's won? all over, Mom. We win it. Oh, what a race. Oh, we won. We won. We won. Oh, that was swell, Mike. Gee, you sure did all right, kid. Oh, I was scared, Joe. They, they shoved me into the rail, so I shut my eyes. But I won, Joe, didn't I, huh? Oh, it was great work, Mike. Hey, hey, look. Look, there he is, Joe. Ring my... He's got a guy with him. Come on. Now, you got nothing to worry about, see? Just keep going. Hello, kid. Nice race. My brother's going to give you back your hundred. I'll take care of this, Mike. There you are, Mr. Ringmer. This belongs to you, doesn't it? The next time you got some extra money, you'll have to find a better way to spend it. We don't go for that. Oh, yeah? That's right. I'm glad you like the race. Come on, Mike. Come back here, you. Now, leave that kid alone. Grab this guy, Pete. No, you don't. Hey, listen, Look out, Joe. Joe. Why, you... 
Now, kid, I'm going to teach you what Let it... me go, let me go! Run, Mike, run! Dave, Dave, help! Shut up! Mike, where are you? Over here, Dave! Take your hands Take him, Dave! Kid. All right, sucker, you ask for it! Keep after him, Dave! I got him, huh? You tend to your own cooking. I got this guy. Dave, kill the cow! Go, go on, go. get out of here, beat it! I gotta help. Let go of my oh, brother, you big... Oh, you bite me, will you? Ow! Dave, Dave, no! Oh, Michael, what, what's the matter? What, it's now. a fight, Mom, it's a fight. I can't <laughs> just say... Oh, Dave! Dave, Joe, are you winning? We ain't losing. Oh. oh, and here's another one for luck. And how do you like this, mister? Oh. All right, all right, lay off. We quit, we quit, I tell yeah, you. Yeah, 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 I got enough. Let me alone. Okay, now. Go on, beat it out of here. Come on, Pete. <laughs> Look, they're running. Look at them. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, Dave, boy, I guess we, we took them, all right. We sure, we sure did. You, we sure. Uh, Dave. Dave! He's failing! He's failing! Oh. Dave, go on, get up. What do you want to go and do that for? Oh. Joe! Oh. Now, let's see. We've got to figure this out. We won $2,000 on the bet. Uh-huh. That's right. $425 on the win. Uh-huh. And $37 that we saved up before. Yep. That's uh, 7 and 5, 12, 6, $2,462. Mm-hmm. Wow, we're millionaires. And you're still earning $100 a week with your music. Oh, no, that's out. We're quitting tonight. But why? Well, Dave's pulling out to see if he can get set somewhere. I figured we'd take Uncle Gus East for the big races. We don't need music anymore. I see. Keep moving. That's the ticket. New faces, new places. Maybe buy another horse, huh, Joe, and start a big-time stable? Hey, that's not a bad idea. We'll be in that winter circle in Kentucky one of these days, boy. Well, suit yourself. You're on your own now. Oh, it's a cinch. We're really going to town, huh? Yep. Oh, quick money, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't asked me what I'm going to do yet. What do you mean? Well, you're quitting your music, even though it pays you the best steady money you'll ever earn in your lives, just because you've had one lucky day. Dave's going one way and you're going another. Oh, but with you and Mike. Not with me. Huh? I'm telling you. I've raised the three of you, and I know you'll never amount to anything unless you stick together. Now what happens? David's trying to run away from himself just on account of a little trouble with Martha. And you're going hog wild in a silly business that'll break you flatter than a pancake. What if Uncle Gus gets a stomachache? <laughs> what have you got then? Even Michael can't talk about anything but racetracks and horses and sure things. What's he going to grow up to be? Now, I mean it. If you boys walk out on your job, I'm walking out on this family. Oh, Mom, you're crazy. Thank you. Well, I've, I don't mean you're crazy, but... But we know what we should do, Mom. All right, I'm leaving. Oh, but, Mom... Mom, it... you shouldn't act like that. You you need someone to take care of you. Oh, I can take care of myself. Don't worry. Oh, but listen. Well, maybe we can figure this thing out, Mom. Not the way you're figuring now. I'm going upstairs and pack. Well. Gee, I wonder what's come over her. She sure acts like she means business. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Telegram, miss. Sign here. Oh, thank you. Dear Martha, we are going to stay in Los Angeles singing. Please come back and marry the four of us. Love, Dave. I wouldn't take all the wealth of Wall Street for a road where nature trod. And I calculate that I'm worth my way. In golden rocks, oh, lucky, lucky me, I can live in luxury, cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. Our stars return for their curtain calls. But now I raise the curtain for big news, the story of the most dramatic test ever made of dishwashing soaps. You see, we wanted to prove scientifically just how gentle and kind New Quick Lux is to hands. So here's what we did. We made a unique test, a one-hand test with hundreds of women in a scientific laboratory under impartial conditions. Each one of these hundreds of women came to the laboratory and sat down at a table on which there were two dishpans. One dishpan contained Lux suds, the other contained suds from some other well-known soap. 
Now, the women themselves didn't know which was which. They put one hand in each dishpan, dipping them in and out of the suds, just as you do when you wash dishes. They did this for 20 minutes, three times a day, just about the time it takes you to wash dishes. Every day, experts checked on the condition of each woman's hand, noted whether the skin was dry, coarse, red, or whether it still retained its soft, smooth texture. I think it's safe to say that no more impartial test has ever been made of the effect of dishwashing soaps on the skin. Every condition was equal for each soap. Five leading soaps frequently used for washing dishes, including Lux, were tested, and here are the results. The difference between the Lux hands and the hands placed in suds from other soaps was truly amazing. Scientists reported that in case after case, while the Lux hand remained smooth and soft, the other hand looked red and rough. From women making the tests came words like these. I knew Lux was wonderfully gentle, but these tests proved to me that it's much kinder to the hands than the other soaps tested. I'll always use new, quick Lux for my dishes. From the scientists conducting the tests came this verdict. From these results, it's obvious that under comparable use conditions, it can be correctly claimed that Lux is milder than any other soap tested. Now you yourselves can prove this very same thing if you'll try new quick Lux for your dishes. You can avoid red, rough housework hands. Your hands can stay lovely, soft, white, in spite of dishwashing. So change to new quick Lux for your dishes tomorrow. Your grocer has it now, in the same familiar box, at no extra cost. It's so fast, so thrifty, and so marvelously kind to hands. Here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The Beebe brothers, restored to their original identities of Bing Crosby and Ralph Bellamy, are back again at our microphone. And a red-letter day for Bellamy, thanks to both of you. Well, DeMille and Crosby are always fixing to please, Ralph, but what have we done now? Well, in the movies I play in, the other guy gets the girl. Mm -hmm. the Lux Radio Theater, I get the girl. It's the happiest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, now, this can't go on. A villain for Bellamy next time he shows up, CB, or he'll be floating off into the clouds. <coughs> Bing, I've, I've always thought... We might have you play a villain sometime. Let me hear how, how menacing you can sound. Well, I'm going to give it to you straight, partner. <laughs> Your number's up. <laughs> Odd or even. Well, from here, it looks like an even number one, CB. The radio editors of the United States and Canada for the sixth straight year have just voted the Lux Radio Theater the best dramatic program on the air in the annual poll conducted by Alton Cook of the New York World Telegram. Not much menace in that. No, I'm afraid you won't do as a villain, Bing. But I assure you that the staff of the Lux Radio Theater is grateful for this tribute from the radio editors. As reported by the hero who has just been voted radio's leading popular singer by those same editors. What's the show next week, CB? Next Monday night, Bing. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Ginger Rogers and Joel McRae in the RKO screen hit, Bachelor Mother. The play's a delightful story of a girl who finds a baby on a doorstep. It's an... <laughs> It's an adventure that leads to romance for her and a gay and thrilling evening for us. That's Ginger Rogers and Joel McRae in Bachelor Mother next Monday night. Well, you keep getting shows like that and you'll win all the polls there are. So long, CB. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Drop round and serenade us soon again. <laughs> our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. And the Lux Radio Theater presents Ginger Rogers and Joel McRae in Bachelor Mother. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as ringer, Lou Merrill as announcer, Emery Parnell as manager, Edward Marr as Pete, Jack Carr as filter, James Eagles as steward, and Frank Coughlin Jr. as telegraph boy. Bing Crosby appeared by courtesy of the Kraft Cheese Company. His most recent picture was the star maker for Paramount, and he has just completed Paramount's Road to Singapore, in which he co-stars with Dorothy L'Amour and Bob Hope. Ralph Bellamy recently finished the Columbia picture, His Girl Friday, and is now working at Paramount Studios in The Woman from Hell. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.